Horns up, talking Texas podcast. Fisher Disciples, DJ, Nikki, Snacks, Kreider, gentlemen. It is the Big 12 Conference Championship Week. We are in it, and not only are we in it, we are the favorite. 15 and a half points. That's what it's jumped to the over under 54 and a half. The Texas Longhorns are favored in Jerry World over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Mullets are gone. Yours, no mullet. Gundy, no mullet. The Cowboys going from an air raid offense, firepower, slinging offense, the gunslingers of Oklahoma. Now they're running the football with the Doak Walker Award nominee, the Offensive Player of the Year in the Big 12, Ollie Gordon. He is leading the way for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. He goes up against our top tier, top five in every category across the board, run defense, number one red zone defense, number one third down defense. Gents. That's the lay of the land before we get into any kind of crazy transfer recruiting news because we have something to talk about. Big 12 Conference Championship. Who are your keys to the game? Maybe give me a key player and a key for the entire team that you're looking at, Toss. We'll start with you. Yeah, I think worth mentioning also because Please. Sark was definitely in the mix for this award, but uh, Gundy is the Big 12 Coach of the Year as well. Um, and if you look at what they're over, they're, they're expected over under – um, I can understand the fact that them getting to the Big 12 championship was uh, a really impressive feat this year, but you I know. think it's kind of a jab if I'm being Maybe. honest. Mm. Like Talk to I me. think when it comes to players and giving out those accolades, it's glaring, you know, that you can make to Andre Sweat the defensive player of the year. Obviously, Ollie Gordon, you know, he's leading the league in rushing and he's got 20 touchdowns on the ground. But I think it's a little more subjective with coaching mm. and it doesn't help that we're leaving the big 12 and they probably don't want Sark getting it. Cause you know, if, at the end of the day, he's going to be repping the sec the minute he, that we're done with this game. Um, players are one thing, but I think for coaching, it's a little bit of a jab. At the end of the year, like you look, our over under we've, we've already hit that for our expectations as well. Sure. You know, I mean, we're, yeah. we're a fringe playoff team. And this team has one loss and, you know, what he's been able to do is pretty incredible with injuries too. You know, Quinn, Quinn Ewers went down and we were still able to put together two wins. And I think you know, Jonathan Brooks goes down and we're still able to win games. So I, I think Stark should have gotten it. I, you sold me that pen. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't disagree with any of it. And I think, I hope that it was close because it deserved to be close. I'm not going to, concern myself with with Sark not winning the award because we're past that now right like we go yeah. we take care of business and we move on and um we didn't get I, hardware byron murphy won defensive lineman of the year Devondre yeah. like you mentioned won defensive player of the year anthony hill won defensive player of the year as a freshman in the big 12 so we, we definitely took and a lot of guys were first team and a lot of and we'll shout them out you know yep. throughout the show <laughs> Bert. Yeah, and a lot of guys were second team so we, we we really did a nice job but toss you were saying sorry i just have to mention that we did take some no out. Yeah. Um, we should pull up that list and just name yeah, out all of the guys when we, when we can. Um, that's part of that is going to be one of my takeaways, but the last thing I'll say is to give Gundy a little bit more credit. They, I think they were dogs in five games this year that they ended up winning, which is really impressive. Um, but you know, this is the first time that Sark has had a 10, 10 win season. Uh, he's got 11 wins could be a 12th win. If we win the big 12 championship, which I know all three of us are going to predict that that will be the case. Um, I'm excited to see that happen. I'm glad that we get to play in Dallas, you know, kind of get, get that monkey off our back a little bit. I know it's not going to be against the Sooners, but it will be against an Oklahoma team. Um, I think we talked about it earlier in the week, but walking away with the victory against, you know, the, the Cowboys from Stillwater, a team that we won't play for a long time would, would be a really, really good feeling for the horns. But a guy that was named big 12 second team, who I think deserved to be a first team guy, Jade Barron. I think that level of disrespect for him, AD Mitchell, who was also second team. And then I'm forget, And then JB Jonathan Brooks was, was also second team. That one I understand, right. Because of the injury, you know, he wasn't able to put up similar numbers sure. to, to Ollie, you know, by the end of the season, but I want Baron to go out there and have a pick. I want our defensive backs who are, are being besmirched a little bit here. Um, I don't know why we're talking about, our past defense at this point in the season, like it doesn't really matter because we have one of the best defenses period in the country. And you want to give Sark even more credit. He's an offensive minded guru. He's an offensive minded head coach for that to be our strongest suit of our team. I think speaks volumes to the type of recruiter he's been to the type of 
of head coach he has been and letting the position coaches and a, and a coordinators beneath him do their job and excel at their job. Um, even more of a tip of the cap to, to Steve Sarkeesian. And I think our past defense, it, it steps up and they play big yeah. and our DBs, they break there. We're, we're a lot of PBUs in this game, maybe a couple of interceptions I'd love to see. Cause I know our run defense is going to be stout. I don't care who their running back is. Yeah, I think we get, I think some of our defensive players, Baron obviously getting second team honors along um, in that group with Jalen Ford. He was, he, he was so sorry. Jalen Ford was first team yep. with Sweat, with Murphy. Second team on defense was just Baron, which is kind of crazy considering how good our defense was. Um, I think, you know, some of our, some of our defensive backfield uh, mates, you know, are, are victim to how many, how deep we are and how much Did we they give a third team or is it just first and second? No, it's just the first and second team on, on second team offense though. We had some guys, we had AD Mitchell, like you mentioned, Tosh, Jonathan Brooks, like you mentioned first team, we, we were all, we were everywhere on the first team. We had Ford sweat Murphy. Like I said, uh, worthy was a double winner. Uh, he was a receiver and he was the return man for the big 12, um, that, which to count twice. Like, I mean, what Khalil Mack was first team all pro in the NFL, like for two different positions. Yeah. He, yeah. He's two time. He's, he's, he's double dipping right there, uh, yeah, which is great true. for him. Burt Auburn, obviously the place kicker, like you mentioned, Nick Sanders, first team tight end. He was the second guy on the list, which is great. Uh, worthy, the third receiver mentioned. Um, and then on the offensive line, Kelvin Banks beast. Um, that's, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll echo what Toss said. I mean, at the end of the day, Sark put together this this coaching staff, right? Getting the right coordinators in there, getting the right uh, position specialists in there. We talked about it last show that Tashard Choice, you know, might have a pretty good opportunity to take a, another job somewhere at some point. You know, maybe get a head coaching job in a couple of years. I mean, he turned down the Rams running back job, you know, last year, and that's that's the pros. You know what I mean? And Having a guy like Bo Davis in there, you know, coming back to Texas and putting together an awesome offensive line or defensive line, like it's it just speaks volumes. And so letting his guys do what they do best, you know, and letting them go and coach their positions and and kind of take control of that defense. I mean, that's that's an aspect that some coaches honestly they get a little bit over zealous on and they try to, you know, get too involved with the things that they're not as, you know, adept to. And yep. I think he's done a tremendous job this season. I've just kind of taken a step back and only focusing on the offense. And obviously we don't know what goes behind closed doors, but I'm sure that this whole entire season, the culture, I mean, Quan's been saying it since day one, that it just feels different. The culture feels different. These players, you know, their mindset is different and stems from the, the tippy top. So thank you, CDC. Thank you, Sark. It's been an awesome season, but job ain't finished. Let's keep going. Job being finished. All right, uh, Toss, back to what you were saying. With your takeaway, give me a player. Give me a takeaway. Give me something you're looking for in, in the Big 12 championship. Yeah, um, I mentioned I, Jade Barron is one of my players that I, I'm I'm keying in on. I'm highlighting. Um, I'd love for him to have an interception. Of course, that's not how it always goes, right? Maybe if Taff had pulled in that interception last game, he might have ended up with a, a second team all Big 12, which mm. would have been tremendous from where you know he started his career. But I, I want to see us capitalize on third downs, which means that we have to capitalize on first down. And Mike Gundy and his presser after they won their last game of the, the regular season, um, he was complimentary at certain points about the Longhorns, but he also said that our defensive line hasn't seen Ollie. They haven't seen an offense like, like Oklahoma State who can run the football as effectively as they can. Um, Cincinnati had a really good run defense and the Oklahoma state Cowboys torched them on the ground. We are not Cincinnati. And I think, you know, to Andre sweat, you already mentioned is the defensive player of the big 12. So I think if we make a real impact on first and second down, when they tried to run the football, um, you know, I think this game is all about our defense as this entire season really has been. Um, mm. and I think if our defense does its job and they play to, you know, their potential as they typically do, then I expect us to see a lot of good things happening on the offensive side of the football. You know, we always talk about complimentary football, but um, I just on the offensive side, I'll quickly mention that I, I really want to see Baxter have a, a huge game here um, mm -hmm. and really, really be a workhorse on the ground. Um, a lot of that work went to blue last game, but you know, we, we, we crushed Texas tech. So there, there wasn't really many times where Baxter really had to get the bulk of the carries, but I think this game, it'll be a little bit closer um, and he'll have to, he'll have to be really productive. Yeah. Love all that. Nick. Yeah. I mean, we, we mentioned him already first team 
all big 12 Jalen Ford. I think he's going to be a huge key here because this is, you know, his last big 12 game and he's looking to build up all the stock he can to potentially sneak in the first round, maybe early second round draft pick. And look, when you're going against the top running back in the nation, the linebackers are going to be keyed. And so I think he's going to have to step up big time in this game and kind of prove that we can stymie this, this run game. I will say, I mean, as much as they run the football, their quarterback also throws the ball 35, 40 plus times in a game. So it's not like they're completely only toting the rock. I mean, it's a pretty balanced offense. They just gash people when they do run the ball. So um, you can't lose sight of everything because I think this team can really, you know, spread it out all across the way. So I mean, I'm looking at the whole defense to really step it up. But on the offensive side, I mean, look, we know where he's gone at the end of the season. He was our leading receiver. He was our leading receiver in last year's game that we lost to them. Mm. So get him involved early. You know, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, there's no one on the field that's faster than him. And so just try to get some deep balls to him, you know, get him some open space, whether it's screen plays. I want him to have eight plus catches. Um, and this could be, you know, the the send off that we're all hoping for for the Big 12. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, you know, I Gabenda too, like I you mentioned Jalen Ford, like that's that's my guy. I think I'm gonna ride off you, Nick. Like uh, him at linebacker. <laughs> we have some of the best run run defensive players in, in the entire league, but he's gonna have to be a guy that steps up, especially if they're gonna be keying in on Nick Guy, which is completely possible because Ford's excellent against the run. So Ford could be receiving some of those blocks. So Gabenda's gonna have to get in there and really be a stopgap for us. Ditto with Murphy, ditto with Sweat, Burke on the outside as well. So the, our defensive front getting in there and making making Bowman's life hell, making Ollie Gordon's life hell, and and showing uh, showing them why we are the top run defense, not letting them show us why he's the top runner in, in the Big Twelve yeah. is going to be key. I also think there's an aspect to this where if we hold them to let's say under 100 yards this game, rushing the ball, sure. or even if like the the defense holds them to you know 300 yards total offense, that there is a little bit of juice that you throw at the committee where it's okay. It's not just about the win. It's not just about the game itself, but it's the quality of win, right? Mm -hmm. How the defense played, right? If it's another game where we're completely shutting down the number one running back in the nation, there's got to be a little bit of added eye test bonus that you throw into the mix when making your final decision, putting a team in the college football playoff. Yeah, completely, I completely agree. And I think, to that point, it's also really important that we don't allow 350 passing yards this game too, right? Because mm -hmm. that's where we've been gashed, um, you know, against quarterbacks that have had success against us. And yeah, so that's why I think the defense has to be complementary within itself as well. And and I like the, you know, keying in on our linebackers from the two of y'all. He's Ollie Gordon's averaging 6.4 yards per carry. Okay. So a lot of the times he's getting to that second level of the defense pretty much every single time he's touching the ball. So those linebackers have to be ready to tackle. And I think in the last three, four weeks, our tackling has been very solid, very consistent. Um, so I want to see that continue in this game. And and I, I love the the point of, you know, highlighting Xavier Worthy like you did, Nick, on the offensive side. And I'll, I'll say this, you know, again, you say it every single week, like our special teams have been a real strong suit for us. And Xavier Worthy he's first team, all big 12. Like, and, and I know Josh, Say his name, <laughs> Josh, you, you, you didn't really want X back there, but he makes a difference. And whether it's no, he's, been, he's been great lately or Keelan back there, whoever it ends up being, just, just some credits to Sanborn too. I mean, obviously yeah. he doesn't punt the ball as much as he needs to because our offense is taking care of business, but I think he's a guy that potentially got snubbed for this award as well. Mm. And yeah. So Sanborn, you know, he'll be important. We we will likely punt the ball at some point in this game. And of course, Bert will get the opportunity to score some points, um, put some threes and ones up on the board when we get into the end zone. Uh, but I'm going to throw another couple yeah. guys at you guys, actually. Uh, it's been a series of unfortunate injuries for a guy that we really like, Ryan Watts, this entire season. You know, he's been struggling to get him to stay on the field uh, and be healthy. So, you, you, you know, he's questionable again going into this one. So Gavin Holmes with the Wake Forest transfers come into his own in the second half. Brooks, Muhammad, our corners of the future have been playing like, you know, upperclassmen these past several weeks. And honestly, throughout the entire, excuse me, the entire season with the time they've been given to play. Like, I'm really looking at those guys to really step up and make a serious difference. Yeah, those are good shout outs for sure. Thank you. Um, all right, predictions. Give me the game score. Do we cover over under? What are we thinking? 
Yeah, I think if you're Texas, you have no choice but to cover. If you want to get into the cultural playoff, this has to be a resounding win. So as it stands right now, as I'm seeing the odds, um, 15 and a half points. Mm. It's got to, in my opinion, it's got to be a three touchdown win um, at least. So uh, I'm going to even go further and say it's a four touchdown win. So I'm going to put it us at uh, 42. For, I'm going to do 41 because I think I think Bert's going to have a couple of field goals. Um, I'll do 41 to 10. Love it. Love it. Um, I like your 41 number. I'm going to have uh, the game going just under. I'm going to go with 41 13. Uh, I think we're going to, we're going to, we're going to put our foot to the pedal, hit the nitro and, and really send a message like we need to. Um, the one thing that I will mention, uh, I just was, as I was doing <laughs> some research on Oklahoma state when they had a five game win streak during the season, they scored on their opening possession in every game. Mm. So I think for our defense starting strong, starting early, being ready to play, which I know Sark and the guys uh, will will have them ready to play, but you're traveling, you're not at home, right? So it's a huge environment. There are going to be a ton of burn orange fans there. There's going to be a lot of orange fans there as well. The the entire stadium is going to be full of orange um, but I think just being ready to play and, and starting hot will be something that's really important for this Longhorn team to have the, the, to have the success and also to have the result that Nick and I are looking for. Josh, what's your score prediction? 55 Longhorns. Wow. 13. I'm feeling it, dude. They can't get the run going. They're done. And I don't, I'm, I'm with you. I was in my head. I'm like, do they, okay, is there the world where Oklahoma State kind of comes out hot and scores and like they score again and again and they do come out hot and then this game's tight? Could be. Gunny yeah. plays as well. This is his, this is his life beating Texas and this is his last shot to do it. Yeah. I will say also Bowman turns the ball over a lot too. So if he's in a position where they're trying to claw the way back and he's turning over the ball, that's more opportunities for us in plus, in plus territory. Yeah. I, I think we, this is, this is a throw step, step on the throat type situation. Unfortunately, maybe for the we have no back. choice. Our backs no against choice. the wall at this point. You right? have like to come in and, and murder scene. You, it needs to be a resounding win because if we're looking at this, if we want the outside chance to jump teams that still won that are ahead of us, right? Like if Oregon wins or Washington wins, like we want a, a way to get in there. You know, if if Bama wins, you know what I mean, and and there's opportunity that they jump us, like we need to make zero doubt that we are better than all these teams and we still have to jump ohio state and i want to and i want to bring this up because the ultimate job of the committee and i think you brought this up and we do so many recordings toss you said that the ohio state buckeyes gave the georgia bulldogs their best test last year which is true and that ended up being the best game thank god they had that game in because yes exciting tcu beat michigan game wasn't that great you see georgia we all know how that went kind of an underwhelming playoffs last year all be being in LA for the college football committee. They do not make, want to make that same mistake again. Luckily they have 12 teams next year, but this is their last year and they kind of want to get the four teams right. And yes, the Ohio state Buckeyes can't do anything to help themselves, but they also can't do anything to hurt themselves. And we still have to jump them. So if this game is tight and we barely squeak one out against like a fine Oklahoma state team, there's a world where it's, it sucks. I don't think that's happening. I think if, I think if we win, we're jumping them. Or I don't on. know. I don't know. I, I, we should look, let me say this. There should they've, be no, they've world listed that... out the criteria. Like the criteria is cut and dry what it is. It's up to them. Obviously it's subjective on how they evaluate certain things, but the first thing on there is championships. One Ohio state is not going to win a championship. I agree. I'm just simply saying to you, there is the first thing, but there are le- uh, several things in the criteria. Ultimately, they want to put the best game possible, which is why it's important for us to show that we are one of the four best teams. And like we are all saying, go out and kill Oklahoma State. If yeah. you don't, then you all you put yourself in a kind of tricky scenario because, look, you we could say the things that should be. We should be ahead of Ohio State if we win. Yes. We should be ahead of Alabama if we both win no matter what. But again, we know how this goes time and time again. Nothing is certain. There is there's <laughs> criteria, but this is all eye test. This is all opinion. This is all, hey, these are the best four teams. These are the best four for ratings. We know they're going to put an SEC team in there. They can't not, right. right? I think, honestly, like if if they were smart about this, and look, I don't, we don't know exactly what 
goes on behind closed doors with them. But this would be the way that I would do it. You go to Vegas, right? Or you take whatever algorithm they have and use the odds makers system and match up all these teams. And if Texas has a favorable matchup against Ohio State, you put them ahead. If they have a favorable matchup against Florida State, you put them ahead. You know, I mean, obviously within reason, like you're not, if Texas loses, then that's not going to be the case. But when it's all said and done, when there's these many one loss teams and there's these many undefeated teams, sure, keep the undefeated teams all the way in there. But if there's a fringe, stack that up because more times than not, Vegas is right. We say it all the time. Vegas is money. Like they, they nail it more times than not. There's a reason why they exist. There's a reason why they're a biggest cash cow in the world. It's because the house always wins. They know what they're doing. So in my opinion, if Florida state wins this game and if Texas wins this game and Oregon wins this game, I want you to simulate all of those matchups that are possible and whoever has the most favorable outcomes, you put in at four. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason that Oregon should be ahead of us right now, but they are. So I don't know what they're thinking. I, I will say for anyone, any Texas fan out there who's listening to this, like you got to protect yourself a little bit here too. And if Florida state wins their game and we win, there's a good chance that, and, and one of Oregon or Washington wins, or let's just say Washington wins, right? Yeah. That and let's be. say Georgia wins and Michigan of course is going to beat Iowa. There is a possibility that we don't make the college football playoff. And yeah, it doesn't like we just have to we have to prepare ourselves for that too. It doesn't take anything away from our season. We're not looking at the college football semifinals right now, right? We're just looking at the Big 12 championship. Do what needs to be done. Leave a sour taste in the mouth of the Big 12 commissioner, who we never have to talk to ever again. Yeah. Except when they can finally prove that one of the teams in the Big 12 after Texas and OU leave is worth us playing at a conference. And then we'll we'll read we'll renegotiate the conversation at that point. But Go take care of business. Really, really root on the Cardinals because we need Louisville to win mm -hmm. so that we're not in the scenario where totally an undefeated yeah. Florida State team is in there with a backup quarterback. Um, and yeah, and just in hope for chaos outside of us taking care of business. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Couldn't we'll see. More. It'll be a fun weekend, hopefully. That it will. Um, one thing I think we're rumored to get, uh, Juice Wells from South Carolina in the transfer portal, which would be big. Wide receiver, which would be big from South Carolina. He was hurt this year, but he was great last year for them. It'll be a second transfer from JMU. Shout out to Patrick Murphy, our boy, who went to JMU. Um, the yeah, I mean, look, we need to replace our wide receivers potentially. Like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys that are popping up to start to put their names in the portal. I mean, obviously, we're not going to be in the mix for a quarterback, but there's you know guys that are making those waves, and we'll see what happens because. As we see, some of our best players come from the portal. I mean, look at Adonai Mitchell. He's he's added such another great dimension to this offense. And, and it worked out for him, too. It did. It like, did. It, I mean, Evan Stewart's another guy to keep an eye out from A&M. Yeah, I got trolled today. I was like, they were like, yeah, he's going to Iowa. I was like, what? And then I was like, I said to somebody, I'm like, this can't be real. They're like, yeah, look at the Twitter handle. It's do-rag Ed <laughs> with like Ed Ogeron, <laughs> the do-rag on his head. I was like, yeah, I got got. Uh, Evan Stewart would be great. Uh, I don't know if we get him. I don't know what his deal is. I, I could see him going to like Ohio State or something um, from what I've seen, but that'd be awesome. Like Juice Wells, your boy, John T. Cook next year, getting some veteran presence into the mix. We still have Casey Kane on the roster. And, and you know, Sark, Sark always has tricks up his sleeve. The AD Mitchell thing kind of came out of nowhere and was a shock last year. You know, that was after they won the national championship. So you, you never know who's going to be available. Um, and it was a, it was an amazing move for both, for, for both parties. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll keep an eye. All right, let's go get a win. Let's go beat it in Jerry's world. Fisher disciples, DJ, yeah. Nikki snacks, Crowder, eat your dubs, get your horns up. We'll see you guys next time.